Hi, I am Craddock Bagshaw. Uh, for years, I was a photojournalist, worked for magazines, newspapers, then did a lot of corporate work and wanted out of it and started developing software for photographers. And those programs set me free financially so that I could shoot the black and white pictures that I wanted uh, that I didn't have to worry about income. I am happy to be part of LHSA because of the amount of energy around Leica's. If it weren't for Leica's, I would not be nearly as happy a photographer as I am right now. If you want to be a photographer, my first tip to you is get a comfortable pair of shoes. You're going to be walking a lot. Um, street photography, for most people, including me, is usually just a moment, a, a grab shot. It's just something that says funny or interesting, and often doesn't go beyond that. But I've noticed that by looking for special relationships between people, I can make a photograph that goes beyond that simple statement. A simple statement might be this picture of Elvis or want to be Elvis, and he's weird. And that's the statement. The implication in that picture is that you know who Elvis is, but the entire story isn't in the picture. It's just a phrase, it's just a word. But in this picture of this woman walking in front of the window in Prague, there's an ideal in the portrait in the window, and there's the reality of who we are walking by. And it's that relationship that makes this shot so different than than the other street shots. If you're going to shoot in the street, if you're going to shoot um, candid pictures, one of the most important things that you can learn is how to move into situations that let you keep shooting without being shut out, without pe people either refusing to let you take their picture, turning their backs on you, or simply paying too much attention to you so that you don't get that, that candid sense of photography. Sometimes when you're in a group, you have to start shooting around the edges of the group until people get used to you, until they start trusting you. And then once they've trusted you, you can start working yourself more and more into the group. Uh, one example is this tattoo artist that I saw in Marbella, Spain, and I was afraid that if I just started shooting pictures of his face that he'd get self-conscious and I'd get a shot and that would be it. So I asked him if I could take pictures of his arm. And his arms were covered, as you can see, with the tattoos. And he said, fine. And I took the picture. Then I went across the alley and just sat on the ground and waited. I didn't try to shoot any more pictures of him. I just waited, hung out, talked to him a bit. And this woman showed up that had tattoos on her leg, and I took a picture of those, and she decided she wanted to pull her skirt up to show me the rest of the tattoo. And when she did, her neighbor down the block started teasing her, and then I was able to get this shot. Um, a lot of times I take pictures of people that are very self-conscious, and it's hard sometimes to get relaxed, candid pictures of them. And one of the tricks I use, and I'll pretend you're the person that's self-conscious, is I bring the camera up, and I'll go ahead and shoot a couple of shots of them, like this. They're looking away, they're making their faces and stuff, and then I'll lower the camera just to my chin level, and I'll start talking to them again, and if they don't look at me, I'll turn my head and get their eyes to look around so that they have eye contact. And once we have eye contact, I'll keep the camera at my chin level. Once you relax, I've got you. And it almost always works. It's one of my favorite tricks. One of the, when you're shooting pictures like this, you really have to keep your camera away from your face as much as possible. And one of the nice things about the Leica are those frame lines. And if you know those frame lines, then you can move yourself into a position to shoot without having to bring the camera up to your face. And you can actually move left or right, forward or backwards, and compose the picture so that when you, 
the time comes to shoot, you just bring the camera up momentarily and take the picture and then put it back down again. And a reason that's important is that virtually everybody in the world now will react to a camera in front of your face. Um, when, you t um, when you're playing a musical instrument, you have to practice, but they always tell you to practice the right thing, and it's the same with the photography. If you only practice the things you already know, you won't get any better. You have to figure out what else it is you need to work on, and you need to practice that. One of the things that I'd suggest is that as photographers get more experience, their images become less two-dimensional and more three-dimensional. They get layered. They don't concentrate so much on the background being out of focus, which is a lot of the concentration now of people shooting, that which lens looks the best in the background when it's out of focus. You'll start looking for things happening in the background that relate to the foreground. And it's something that needs to be practiced. It's something that it's like Cartier-Bresson said, your first 10,000 pictures are your worst. And it's that sort of thing, you need to practice that. Sometimes I would suggest looking at the background, even if it blows your subject in the foreground. And the best way to practice those things are, are things like fairs or weddings or places where people expect to be photographed. Then you can just photograph them um, without their permission, generally speaking and concentrate on the other things and, and look for foregrounds for a while and then look for backgrounds for a while the same way as if you were playing piano and you work one hand and then the other hand and then start putting those together. <laughs>